Hey there guys, it's Jesse, and today we're talking the Ascendant Council in the Bastion of Twilight. This fight is one of those fights that, when you first attempt it, you're going to seem completely overwhelmed and confused. But, given enough time to see all this fight's mechanics, it will become one of the easiest fights in the game, trust and believe. Now, there are four members of this council. Thankfully, unlike the other countless council fights, Blizzard went ahead and decided to only make you fight two at a time. And they broke the fight into three phases. And for you, I'm going to break down those three phases and try to make it a little bit simpler. So let's get into this thing. Phase one involves Faludius and Ignatius, the fire and ice guy. Now, if you've had the pleasure of killing the trash in this room before the boss, you'll know that fire and ice play off each other. You'd also know that if you played any Final Fantasy game. So in order to understand the phase, let's look at their abilities. Faludius has several different abilities to worry about. The first is Heart of Ice, which puts a debuff on the target, dealing frost damage but is in fact magic dispellable. Now the problem here is, when you dispel it, the debuff goes off imbuing players around him with additional damage to Fire, aka Ignatius. Why is this important? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. The other abilities you have to watch out for are Hydro Lance, which does damage to a random target for roughly 50k, and Water Bomb, which unleashes several bombs of water that do 10k damage, but apply a waterlogged debuff when you're hit. This debuff reduces your speed by 25% and makes you susceptible to frost attacks. Like Heart of Ice, we'll discuss this in greater detail in a moment. Finally, he has two very nasty abilities called Glaciate and Frozen Blood. Glaciate deals massive frost damage to any enemy nearby, and anyone that is waterlogged will have their blood frozen. The closer you are to Faludius when he does this, the more damage you take. Now, Frozen Blood freezes you solid, dealing 20k damage every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. Not good. Now let's flip over and look at the fire guy, Ignatius. Ignatius, just like Faludius, has a ton of abilities, and let's look at those right now. His first ability is Burning Blood, which is a debuff that deals fire damage to one target and less magic dispelled. When it's dispelled, nearby allies receive a fire imbued buff. Again, we'll get to it in a sec. The next ability is the Aegis of Flame, surrounding him in a shield, absorbing 1 million damage and preventing any spell interruptions. Of course, during this time he'll use the Rising Flames attack, which does AoE fire damage to everyone in the room over and over and over until you either get the shield down to interrupt him, or you wipe. This one is a raid killer, folks. It happens way too many times. The shield going down is your priority whenever it goes up. That is a special note from us healers to the DPS. His other abilities are Flame Torrent, which is a single target attack that does about 40k damage, and Inferno Leap, where he leaps at a target and does 25k damage to anyone nearby. On his way back from the starting point of where he leapt, he'll leave a trail of fire. Now let's talk the strat for these two. Lots of stuff to worry about, right? Not really. When we remember our tactics a la Final Fantasy, they cancel each other out. During this fight, you of course need two tanks, one for each of the bosses. As for the raid, all the melee are on Ignatius and all the ranged are on Faludius. Why? Because as I said, Faludius' Glaciate deals more damage the closer you are, so you clearly don't want any melee on him, which means you're going to have to put all the ranged. Simple as that. Now you're probably asking yourself, why don't we just take them down one at a time? Well, the phase ends when one of them reaches 25%. The goal here is to get them both to about 25% at the same time. Why? We'll explain in phase 3, but the gist is it's going to royally screw you if you only get one down. Next, when the bosses use their debuffs, Burning Blood or Heart of Ice, the person who has Heart of Ice runs into the melee. Why? Because all the melee are on Ignatius, right? The buff goes off, they get increased damage to him. The person who gets Burning Blood runs into the ranged, is dispelled, buffs them up, they have more damage to the water guy. Make sense? Next, the flame trail left behind by Ignatius is actually a very good thing. You use it to dispel the waterlog debuff you get from Faludius. So, if you get the debuff, you run in and out of the fire, removing it. Really, all these guys' abilities cancel themselves out. Like I said, the only massive damage you're going to face here is from that shield and AoE fire, which you have to get down. 
Once one of the bosses hits 25%, you jump into Phase 2. Phase 2 brings down the Earth and Air Council members from the balcony above. Like we did with the other two, let's break these guys down. Arian, the air guy, has several abilities you need to watch out for. The first is Call Winds, which creates cyclones that circle the room causing 7k damage and levitate a player in the air. This is actually a helpful thing, know where they're at, we'll talk about them later. The next ability is Lightning Rod, which marks a player for electrical attacks. If you get this, get to the edge of the room and make sure no one else is around you. Even if you have to yell and vent like, get away from me, do it. Make sure no one is near you because after a short period of time, he's going to chain lightning you and it's going to hit you for about 10k damage. But anyone who is near you, it's going to bounce to them and do more. And bounce to somebody else and do more. And by that third person, they're dead. And if it bounces to a bunch, that's a ton of dead people. Also during this phase, he'll disperse into swirling air and reappear somewhere else in the room and instantly use a lightning blast on the tank for about 80k damage, so healers be ready. The last ability he has is a Raid Wiper. It's called Thundershock and does 150k damage to everyone. How do you deal with it? Let's look at Tarastra. Tarastra is the Earth Council member and just like his counterpart, has several abilities of his own. The first is Gravity Well, which puts this white swirling vortex on the ground that if you get near it, it sucks you to the ground and defends against any electric attacks. Wink, wink. He also has Hardened Skin, which hardens the caster's skin, increasing physical damage by 100% and absorbing 50% of all the damage taken, up to 65k. But if it's broken, it deals damage to the caster. He will also use Eruption that sends a spike of earth at a player, dealing damage to anyone within 4 yards of the popping spikes. So with that and the lightning, you definitely want to be spread out during this phase. Finally, he has his own Raid Wiper called Quake that does 150k damage to everyone on the ground. Priest Levitation will not work here. So, implementing Final Fantasy 101 tactics, Earth and Air cancel each other out, right? So, in order to avoid the 150k damage wipe, you need to be hit by the opposite element's buff, we'll call it. When Phase 2 starts, find the nearest tornado and jump in. This is gonna levitate you. Now, you need to kill down the boss and do all that stuff, but your main goal here is to keep away from gravity wells. The first massive damage attack is gonna come from Tarastra, which is Quake, but you'll be happily in the air and undamaged. Now, after that happens, immediately go and find a gravity well and jump in, making you grounded, which, when Arian uses Thundershock, will prevent you from taking damage as well. And remember, when you're grounded, do not get near a tornado. All you have to do is repeat this over and over and over again until they hit 25%. So with that knowledge, this phase of the fight becomes very simple. The only thing you have to watch out for is Lightning Rod, the Tornado, and Gravity Well. That simple. Now, once one of the guys equals 25%, you enter Phase 3. The reason you want all four guys to be as close to 25% as possible in Phase 3 is because they pull a Captain Planet, and all four combine and average out their HP. So if they're all around 25% when they form the final boss, he will have roughly 25% life. If two guys are at 25 and two guys are at 100, well, you get the idea. So here's the deal with Phase 3. This boss has four abilities. Lava Seed, which erupts fire on the ground for about 45k damage. Liquid Ice, which puts a pool of ice on the ground that grows longer the boss stays in it, dealing damage to the raid, so it's kind of like a reverse Lich King. Electric Instability, which does constant nature damage to random raid members, increasing the damage the longer the boss is alive. And Gravity Crush, which traps one raid member in sort of a purple bubble and does 10% of max health every half second for 6 seconds. Getting freed from this gives you fall damage too, so you want the healers on this guy immediately. Now, this fight is essentially a tank and spank. You just have to kite the boss around the room, stay spread out, and do as much damage and healing as you can. The key is, the longer you stay in this fight, the harder it becomes. So making sure the boss starts at 25% is the only way to win this. The electric instability is going to get so bad, it will eventually start killing off raid members one at a time, and you have all these ice sheets on the ground, and yeah, it is bad. If you want to win, speed is the key. So, to sum it up, Phase 1. If you get waterlogged, run into the fire. Everyone get on the shield ASAP. Phase 2. Get tornado buff first, then back to the gravity well, then back to tornado, etc, etc. Avoid people with the lightning rod like the plague. Phase 3. 
kill it quickly, spread out, kite the boss. That's it. Hopefully I have helped you understand this fight a little bit more. The more you understand this fight, the easier it becomes. It seems like a lot, trust me, but it's actually very easy once you get it down. And just because it wouldn't be a complete video without the kill, here's our latest attempt on this boss. Remember, if I can do it, so can you. And that's it guys, thanks for watching, thumbs up, subscribe, and as always, to be.